course, you've been joined by your colleagues to look at um, some of these important issues. What would you say is the key drivers of, you know, global uh, migration? Are people simply leaving rural areas in search of, um, you know, a better life, a better economic opportunity? What is the kind of um, key drivers that has been identified by your conference for why people are moving uh, into cities? Yes, well, there's, there's really two ways to look at this. We need, first of all, to look at it at a global scale and to look at movement of people across uh, international boundaries. And in the case of that kind of movement, what we call cross-border or international movement, it's very much driven by uh, economic factors. Now, obviously, there are refugee movements as well that complicate the picture. But generally, it's about the movement for better economic opportunities. Now, there has been this, this sense, though, that once people leave a, uh, their country of origin uh, and find a better life somewhere else, then they settle down there and uh, they're never, in effect, heard from again. What we're finding, and, and, and a lot of the research that this, uh, uh, it's being presented at the conference is showing, uh, is that that's actually not the case, that um, there are massive um, returns to migration in which migrants, uh, the term used is remit, remittances. And so you get this movement of, of human capital out of, uh, say, the global south, uh, into other areas in the south and into the north, and then a reverse flow of remittances that the World Bank says in 2010, uh, about $400 billion uh, to the global south, which actually exceeds foreign direct investment. Uh, and overseas development assistance. So it's actually very significant in terms of the returns to migration. Mm -hmm. The other kind of migration is, is internal migration, and that's driven perhaps a little bit more by the kind of things you're talking about, which is the fact that in, uh, in many countries in Africa, uh, the rural areas, rural poverty, are just not offering people the kind of livelihood or future uh, that they want for themselves and their children. And so, in, in many parts of Africa and other areas of the global south, we've got this massive uh, shift of people uh, from the rural areas into uh, the towns and cities. It's a dramatic and I think irreversible uh, transition. Mm -hmm. Professor Crush, talk to us about this nexus around um, urbanization, migration, and of course food security. One can just imagine the kind of pressures that communities must be under, you know, that move around. If you take, for example, a, uh, a, a an economic disaster area where people are forced to flee their homes, uh, forced to flee perhaps farmlands and, and not have access to, to food security. Um, how does these uh, three factors, you know, uh, impact on each other, and more importantly, um, what is the lessons that we can be learning out of um, how to be able to make people feel more secure um, when they're constantly moving from one place to the next? Well, I think first of all we have to understand what we mean by being food secure and food insecure. Uh, in uh, many cities in the south and in fact many countries in the south and in Africa uh, included, it's, it's not as if there isn't enough food. But uh, I suppose it's the affordability food, issue. Uh, to go around, and that's true on a global scale as well. So the real issue is a question of access. Uh, and that's particularly true in the cities where people, we found, and uh, again, research at the conference is showing, uh, by and large, um, despite the efforts of, of various agencies to get people who are living in the cities to grow some of their own food, uh, the interest in, in, in many cities is actually quite low. Uh, people prefer to, s to spend what little, you know, the time they have uh, in income generating activity and are purchasing uh, most, uh, most of their food. So the real issue then is about food prices. This is in the cities. It's about food prices and it's about access to an income to purchase uh, the food. And this is really the big crisis and dilemma uh, at the moment. It's not a production question so much uh, as, uh, as an access uh, mm -hmm. question. And it, it just gets, the, the magnitude of the challenge just gets larger and larger 
uh, with this urban transition of people from countryside to the city that's taking place. Mm -hmm. Now, if one looks at a place like China, for example, I mean, China is seen as part of an emerging uh, uh, market, um, and we've seen massive migration with the kind of industrialization that a country like China has undergone. What is the kind of, of um, you know, migration patterns in a, in a huge economy like China, and what is the impact on, on um, you know, urbanization in a place uh, like that? Well, I'm not uh, an expert on China, although we do have, as part of this conference, we've deliberately tried to put uh, the southern, south, uh, and African context uh, in a comparative way, uh, comparing what's going on uh, in this continent, both with um, Asia, uh, China and India, and also with Latin America. Now, Latin America is a country that um, moved from being predominantly uh, rural to being predominantly urban in the late uh, 20th century. So in most Latin American countries, you basically got 70 to 75 percent of the people living in, uh, in the cities. Uh, China is on the same kind of trajectory uh, as, uh, uh, as Africa in terms of the speed of urbanization. But what distinguishes it there is, is the sheer size and rapidity of this. Um, its uh, growth rates are, are higher in China than they are uh, in, uh, in Africa. And so uh, China confronts the same kinds of, uh, of questions uh, that, uh, that African governments are confronting. But what I would say about it is that they are more interventionist. I mean, they, they, they understand the nature uh, of, of this challenge and are trying to think through creative solutions. Uh, and I'm not always sure in the African context with our focus, which is predominantly still on, on the rural areas and the small farmers, uh, that we've actually really grappled yet.